Welcome to the first episode of Beyond Rewind powered by Astro Gaming. My name is Jared Dunphy, and in this series, I'll be breaking down various gameplay clips with a time manipulator to help explain the thought process behind the plays and help you improve. In this episode, I'm going to break down two flag runs from a capture the flag game on Heretic. Most players, whether they are aggressive, passive, good or bad, will only run flags once they know the whole enemy team has been eliminated to ensure a safe flag capture. The whole point of this video is to show that sometimes you can run the flag even when the whole team is still alive. As long as you have the awareness to know when the other team is out of position, you can easily win games. With that out of the way, let's get started. After the initial breakout, you'll see that I'm under the enemy's base. This is causing me to block the basement spawns or at least reduce the chance of them happening. I also have a teammate at pink that is fighting another player. As I lift up, I see that one of my other teammates just died at the carbine tower and the two enemy players are going to spawn any second. It's safe to assume they will spawn on the carbine side under these circumstances. So once I touch ground, I want to help my teammate but start an aggressive flag run towards the pink side. As I clean up the kill, I can tell that one of the enemy players is attempting a counter cap in response to my flag pull. Since my two teammates are just now respawning in the base, they can easily shut down the enemy flag runner while I bring in the first capture of the game. Now let's rewind the footage and watch the full play at normal speed. So there's a couple things to note while I'm doing this flag run. I keep jumping off the rails because it's a nice way to get to your base faster, you have these little shortcuts, and on top of that, it's a great way to avoid grenades. Um, while I'm running back to the base, you'll see that my shields are low, and I'm hugging the wall and I wait for a second. I know the other team is going to try to shoot or throw grenades at me, so I'm just going to wait for just another second or two just to make sure I secure that flag cap. And then after this play, the other team was so confused about what happened that we were able to take over the pink tower, which is huge. So later on in the game, after getting a nice carbine spawn, my teammate and I aggressively charged the enemy's base. My teammate is taken down, but I can hear the enemy player walk into the lift, so I throw a grenade where he's going to land and get the easy kill. I check the scoreboard and see that we're in a 2 on 2 situation. I know the two teammates that just died were on pink side, so that must mean the two surviving enemy players are also on the pink side. I grab the flag and run towards the carbine tower, which is the opposite side of where the surviving enemy players are at. It's safe to assume those two enemy players are going to push into my base. This makes it very likely for my teammates to spawn with me at Carbine, since they just died at Pink and our base is dangerous. If my team is with me, that makes it very easy for them to escort me to the base safely. At this point, I'm very close to dying, so I duck behind cover and wait for my shields to come back. As I run inside my base, an enemy player starts shooting at me from behind and brings me back down to half shields. There's no way I can win this fight, so I run the flag back to Carbine near a teammate. If I die, my team will have just a little bit more time to make sure the enemy team doesn't recover the flag and get even more ahead. Basically, all I want is distance. My teammate comes to save the day, but he's taken down. Fortunately, my shields start to recharge just as I hear my teammate hit a melee before dying. I jump out and take a chance. I get the kill and proceed to capture the flag. Once again, due to the chaotic nature of that last fight, the enemy team loses pink control yet again. Just like before, let's rewind the footage and watch the full play at normal speed. So there's really only one thing that I want to talk about during this replay here. The thing is, if you want to learn, if you want to get better at Halo, you have to make risky plays, and you have to commit to those plays. If you play too passive, you're not going to learn anything. If you hesitate, you will fall. you got to commit to these plays 100%. So when I grabbed this flag, my teammates were pretty upset because at the time, the enemy was only one down. But I saw their positioning, I saw my teammates' potential spawns, and I went with it. And ultimately, it did work. Basically, all I'm trying to say is, if you see a risky play and you think you can do it, go for it. Just make sure those risks are calculated risks. Don't do anything too stupid. That's all I have for this episode of Beyond Rewind. I know this is something new, so I'd appreciate any feedback. If you have any questions, be sure to leave a message in the comment section below, and thank you so much for watching.